Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Studio Portraiture. I'm sure you're here because you have an interest in learning portrait photography. Are you a photography enthusiast wishing to photograph family and friends simply for the fun of it? Or maybe you're an aspiring photographer with a dream of opening your own portrait studio and photographing for profit. Whatever your reasons, this course will show you how to create fabulous portraits in a studio or any indoor location, even your living room. My name is Charlie Borland and I've been a professional photographer for more than 30 years. During my career, I have photographed thousands of portraits for individuals, corporations, businesses, and magazines. These portrait sessions included corporate CEOs, famous athletes, politicians, employees, teenagers, children and family, and the list goes on. This experience is the foundation for this course on how to create fabulous studio portraits. I've designed it for those who know nothing about portrait photography. If you are wondering if this course is right for you, then here are a few questions to ponder. Do you know why you would use an umbrella over a light box or how to light a background? Do you know how to control highlights and shadows? Do you understand what a knockout background is or how to create lighting that features your subject in a dignified manner? Do you know how to light a thin face versus a round face? What about studio strobes? Do you fully understand how they work? In this course's lectures, I will show you how the lighting equipment works, how to essentially sculpt your subjects with light in a complementary fashion, and how to apply what we call accent lighting that makes your subjects look fabulous. You will learn how to create simple portraits using one, two, three, or more lights. I'll show you how to light different backgrounds to create the right look for your subject, and how to photograph headshots to full-length portraits. I've also included a guide to posing heads and hands. And then we finish off with a little portrait retouching. This course's content contains videos, written lectures, all illustrated with lighting diagrams to show you exactly where the lights were placed. By the time you complete this course, you will understand your lighting equipment inside and out, you will understand how to choose the right light modifier for a specific light quality, how to create beautiful lighting for individual headshots, small groups of people, couples, and pretty much anybody you wish to photograph. And there's a free download listing my equipment recommendations in case you don't have any studio lights yet. I'm confident by the time you finish this course, you will be photographing beautiful portraits of all types of people and maybe even getting paid to do so. Lighting is a key ingredient when defining a successful photo. Without light, there would be no photography, or really, life as we know it. Think of how light affects the world around us. The landscape is shaped by light and gives us a visual story in showing the layout of the land by defining textures within the landscape. In the studio, lighting a portrait provides the visual information about that person, like the color of their hair, the shape of their face, the color of their eyes, and in a lot of ways it tells us who they are. Lighting is used very successfully in photographing products in which the photo entices us to buy that product. Lighting techniques make food look better to us, cars more appealing, a model sexier. So in this lesson we're going to discuss the variety of different types of light, light quality and lighting direction. Available light is known as ambient light. This is the light that exists, and it's constant. Sure, in some cases, it's a light we can turn off, like a ceiling light in a room. But it's usually a continuous light source. It could be sunlight, light from a street light, light from lamps in our living room, lights in an office, or even lights in the place you work. But it's always the light source that is constant and can also be looked at as the light that you may or may not have control over its adjustment. Mastering light is most important to the portrait photographer. Like painters who create a three-dimensional look with different shades of paint, 
the photographer essentially paints their subject with light, creating highlights and shadows that shape their subjects. Supplemental or secondary light is strobe or flash, but it can also be what's known as hot lights. Strobes are flash units and hot lights, and also today cold lights, are constant lights. In both cases, you can set up these lights and move them in and out of your photography setup. Strobe lights are by far the most commonly used type of supplemental light used in portrait photography. Strobe lights also have the ability to change their output level of the light that is emitted during each flash by an adjustment of the power settings. Hot lights and cold lights can also usually be adjusted by a control making them brighter or dimmer. But in the case of hot lights, changing the power or the brightness to the light itself changes the color temperature. Here's just one example of using light to create an effect. And of course, it's not a portrait photograph, but it is a camping photograph. A flash was used to light their faces, which you cannot see the flash unit, to simulate campfire light. So it's just one way of manipulating flash to create an effect and we're going to talk so much more about all of this coming up. Now we're going to look at light quality in regards to soft light versus hard light. The quality of light is often described as how hard or how soft the shadows created by that light source are. Soft light and hard light are determined by the size of the light source in relationship to the size of the subject. Generally, the larger, more diffuse the light source, the softer the light quality and the softer edges on the shadows. As an example, if you have hard sunlight on your subject, the shadows are going to have hard edges like the scenic photo here. But when a cloud comes over the sun, a huge diffuser has been placed over the light source, which is the sun, and the shadows become much softer. When you place a diffuser in front of a hard light source and close to it, the shadow cast by the subject are almost as hard as if there was no diffuser at all. But the further you move the diffuser away from the light source and closer to the subject, the softer the shadows become. The idea here is that the larger the light source in relation to the subject, the softer the quality of light. Take a look at these two photos. Here I have a diffuser leaning against the light source, so when the strobe fires, it's only going to have a small spot of light on that diffuser, so it is diffusing the light a little bit as it's on its way to lighting the products here. But look at the photo of the products. Notice how hard the shadows are? This is very contrasty light. Now I've taken that same large diffuser and moved it much closer to the product and much further from the strobe. Now notice the shadows and how soft they are. This reinforces what I've been saying. The larger the light source in relationship to the subject, the softer the light quality is going to be. So now you might be wondering why is this important? Well the reason is you must be able to determine the best quality of light that you want to create that's going to show off the subject's features. That's what mastering portrait lighting is all about. Now we'll take a look at highlights, both specular and diffused. Specular highlights are described as spot, hot spot, or mirror-like, while diffused are usually wide and soft. Here we are talking about highlights rather than light quality. Imagine that you're shooting a car in front of a house and the sun is shining on it. When you walk around the car looking for the best angle to photograph it, a hot spot of the sun appears on the car. It could be on the hood, it could be on the windshield, it could be anywhere that you see the sun reflecting. Now come back to the same car and look at it when the sky is overcast. There will be no hot spot, but rather one large soft highlight. Here's an example of two products in the studio to illustrate this point. The difference between specular and diffused highlights is the size of the highlight. But also notice on the left photograph, the specular highlight has a shadow cast behind the bottle where the diffused highlight does not. The specular highlight on the left was created with a strobe using just the raw silver reflector without any light modifier. 
while the diffused highlight on the right was created using a large light box. The difference is, again, the spot or the raw reflector on the strobe creating the specular highlight on the bottle does not send light wrapping around the bottle, while the light box is much larger than the bottle and subsequently it's a lot softer and it's wrapping light around it. So that eliminates the shadow that's indicated in the first picture on the left with the specular highlight. Now let's look at light quality, flat versus contrast. Flat light has a shorter relationship between highlights and shadows. So imagine white and black objects sitting on a white background. If the light is soft and diffused, which is also referred to as flat light, there will most likely not be a pure black or a pure white within the subject. Contrasty light has a more extreme range between shadows and highlights. The same subjects with hard light used as a light source will probably have a pure black area in the shadows or on the subject and a white highlight. And if you look at these two pictures you can see some examples. The photograph on the left which has a white cup in it and a black phone really has a gray cup and a very dark gray phone. But when using contrasty light as in a raw strobe with a silver reflector on it, you have a white cup and you have a black phone, but you also have strong shadows. And you'll learn later how this plays into portrait photography. So now, are you wondering again, why was that important? Flat light is very soft light, while contrasty light is often harsh, like raw sun or stage lighting that might be seen indoors. If you want a soft quality light to show your subject, then you will shoot in a flatter quality of light. If you want a stage lighting, contrasty light look, then you will choose a light that is harsher or delivers a more harsher light quality. Now let's go on to the next video. But if you close your eyes.